Hey everybody, today I'm going to tell you how I landed my internship at BuzzFeed, which then turned into a full-time gig. I know, what an original idea. Nobody's done this before. I do get asked this question a lot, so everybody get comfortable. Without any further ado, it all began when I graduated college. I went to Hofstra University and I studied TV production and business. Now, I've always been a creative person. I've always been a passionate person and I've always been a driven person, but I was not always a very good student. I've always had a really hard time learning about things that I don't care about. In high school, I was in AP English because I love reading and writing, but when it came to math or history or what else did I teach in high school? Social studies? What does that even mean? Basically, anything that didn't seem interesting to me, I didn't dedicate a whole lot of attention to. It was physically difficult for me to focus on. I was a pretty average student, but one thing I've always been super passionate about was storytelling. In college, I would lean into all different kinds of storytelling. I was in the radio station. I started with a film degree, but then I stopped doing that because I got intimidated. So then I switched over to TV and business, but that ended up being live TV and I didn't really care about that. And finally, in my last year, I took a screenwriting class, fell in love with that, but it was too late to get a degree in that, so. After college, I was feeling pretty lost, actually. I hadn't done any internships. Overall, I just felt kind of like I had this unreachable dream of being a filmmaker. So I went back home for a year and a half after college with just a part-time job. I was an advisor for a travel abroad company. I was starting to make new friends in town. I was thinking about moving into my own place in town. And I was kind of losing focus and I was starting to feel like I was not meant to be a filmmaker. I was not meant to be in front of the camera. It was just too much of a pipe dream. I told my mom I was gonna buy an apartment in Northampton where I worked. And she just said to me, you know Merle, I really think you're a little bit lost. I think you're stuck. You, you always talked about going to New York City. Always said that was your dream. You wanna make films, videos. You wanna tell stories. I see you partying a lot. I see you procrastinating. I see you sleeping in all the time. Basically, she told me to get my shit together. I cannot thank her enough for that because the next day or two after I had some time to ruminate, I was like, you know what? She's totally right. What do I have to lose? I canceled my plan to buy the apartment. I quit my part-time job. And my mom was like, you applied for jobs in New York, right? Like you're moving in four days. So you've got a plan, right? And I was like, yeah. Actually, I had only applied to two places, for an internship at HBO and an internship at BuzzFeed. The one thing I did do a few months before moving that I think is what made me stand out is I made a website for myself. It was MerleOneal.com. What a great time to have a weird name. Nobody else had taken it. I had a little bit of my savings and I'm fortunate enough that I knew if it wasn't to work out, you know, I could always go back home. I have to acknowledge the privilege that I was born into in that way. Of course, not everybody has a safety blanket or a safety net, so I'll always be grateful for that. And I will always acknowledge that that gave me a leg up as far as bravery and courage goes. But other than that, I was scared out of my mind. I moved in with my very good friend, Ricky, and we moved into Bushwick, Brooklyn. After about a week of moving to Brooklyn, I got a call and there's a man in the line and he says, hey, we saw your applications for BuzzFeed. We we're hoping that maybe we could schedule an interview with you. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> I believe I started crying while I was still on the phone, but I got off really quickly after that. I was like, yes, just call, uh, you know, like whenever you want, tomorrow, whatever. When I had my interview, I was so nervous. I just tried to let my personality shine through as much as possible. So I didn't know how to make a GIF. I didn't know how to make a meme. Like, I don't know any of that stuff. I was just an artsy kid that wanted to be a storyteller and wanted to make identity-driven content. I was asked why I was drawn to BuzzFeed, what kind of content they were doing that I already liked, where I could see myself contributing to BuzzFeed, how my voice is different, and I just tried to be as honest as possible. I think I even told them I was really nervous. But the interview went on for about 20 minutes and I hung up the phone and then two days later, I was told that I got the internship. I had always looked at BuzzFeed as such a unique voice out there in media, and the thought that I was gonna be able to contribute my voice to it was the coolest thing in the world. I still think to this day, my website is a big part of what helped me land the internship because it made all my work so accessible so they didn't have to click on a bunch of different links and a resume. I just attached it with my resume. So when I first started at BuzzFeed, everyone was super nice. I remember being really surprised that people would actually say hello to you in the hallways and everyone was smiling and happy and there's free snacks and people are so cool and they dress funky. I was one of four interns and we were the first 
video intern class in BuzzFeed New York because the video team was all in LA. Guess who was in my intern class? <laughs> Alvin Jew. Good old Alvin. He was actually one of the first people I ever met at BuzzFeed. One of my first tasks as an intern at BuzzFeed was for my friend Julia Pugachevsky, and it was to print out at a CVS a two-foot medical vagina chart. It was a really fun experience watching this poor middle-aged man slowly watch it print out and try to figure out what it was. The more I was there, the more I was like, I just want this so badly. I want to become a producer. And I worked really hard and I always said yes. I stayed late, I came early. I was given the opportunity between choosing celebrity videos, style videos, or food videos. I don't know anything about celebrities and I certainly don't follow fashion. I like to cook, I didn't know anything about cooking, I didn't have a culinary background. This is before I was vegan and also before I was vegetarian, so I was a big old meat eater when I first rolled through with my food videos. Oh god, Alvin will probably never forget this for the rest of his life. One night I was working late and there was a pot of hot oil, I was making these deep fried lasagna poppers. I thought in order for oil to be warm enough it would start to bubble. That would be how I'd know it was ready, but water, right? No, <laughs> so wrong. I cranked up the heat on this big pot of oil, waiting for it to boil, nothing's happening. I let it sit there for 30 minutes. And then I remember my mom at one point in my life saying, you know, when you want to test if um, an oiled surface is ready, you just flick a little bit of, you put some water on it to see if it spatters. I took my cup of water that I had, I poured a little onto the oil in the pot. And I didn't say that. Fireworks. Fireworks. It was like gun. Like... I actually dove underneath the table because I was afraid I was going to get a third degree burn. And Alvin came around the corner. He was like, what happened? Oh, what's wrong? Why does it smell like oil in here? Needless to say, I learned my lesson. And since then, I have become quite the cook, but it wasn't pretty at first. It is true what they say. Half the battle is faking it until you make it. You just say yes, you do the jobs you don't necessarily want to do. So I got the job. Not after the oil incident, but after months and months and months of rigorous work. I did more than I was asked to do. I just worked really hard and I made it really clear that I wanted to be there. I remember calling my mom in the stairwell at the office crying. I called my brother. I was really excited. This is my first job. So many of my other friends had had such a clear idea of what they wanted to do and where they were gonna do it and they had a sure path. And they were doing practical things that were like guaranteed to make them money and I was really nervous to chase the creative dream but here I was with a full-time job at a place I love. But I really want you guys to know, whoever you are, wherever you are, you don't have to be a straight-A student to achieve your dreams. It's important because you don't wanna look back at your life and think, why didn't I try? Why, why, why didn't I do a little bit more? And of course, it's not as easy for everyone. It's not. That's the reality of things. If you don't have somebody who's there telling you, you can do it, you've got this, you've gotta take this shot, you've gotta take this chance, let me tell you. You know what the beautiful thing is? Once you start pursuing your dreams, you might find that that's not even what you really wanna do. That path may take you somewhere entirely different. So just think about the thing that makes you happy. Think about the thing that drives you. Think about the thing that gives you goosebumps or the thing that makes you wanna cry or the thing that makes you laugh. Think of the thing you love so much and then let's get you going. Let's get you, that's your first step. You just gotta follow the passion, you gotta follow the fun. Just take the first step, learn about it, read about it, watch YouTube videos about it, watch documentaries about it, talk about it, talk to people. You'll be amazed that when you start to show people how interested you are in something, they wanna help you. You will have hard times, you will get stuck, you will reevaluate, and that's okay. The most important part is that you continue. Let me know what your passion is. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if there's anything else that you'd like advice on. You know, I'll do my best. And if I can't give you good advice on it, I'll find good advice on it. I'm wishing you guys all the love, all the luck. Go after what's yours. <laughs> and I'll see you soon.